Okay, let us now move on to the solution on the previous c -tort. So we have 6 here. So this is a problem on the functional rot rotation wherein most of the problems are just uh, to prove the equations when we substitute some, some of the functions. Okay. So moving on for the first problem, we'll just have to apply our knowledge in simple algebra okay so if the function of y is equal to 4 raised to y show that function of y plus 1 minus function of y is equal to 3 function of y so to do that we'll just substitute in our equation so this is the original function that is 4 raised to y so we'll just have to replace y by y plus 1 as for this function and then we list 4 raised to y and then here we arrive at a similar base of the exponent so this is just a matter of manipulation so we know that when we add exponents we are actually multiplying a, an expression with the same base so meaning y plus 1 is an independent exponent of 4 so hence we can uh, reverse it back to its original form which is 4 raised to y times 4 raised to 1 minus 4 raised to y. So here we can factor out 4 raised to 1 or sorry 4 raised to y which is common to this equation. So we're gonna take out 4 raised to y there, 4 raised to y, and then what is left in the equation is 4 raised to 1 minus 1. Okay, so therefore, so this should be 4 raised to y, okay, that is being out, and then what is left 4 raised to 1 minus 1, okay. So by this, uh, we have 4 is to y, 4 minus 1 is actually 3. Hence, we can say that this is equal to 3 function of y. Because the function of y is actually 4 raised to y according to the problem. So here's the solution for the first problem. Okay, for the second problem, we have number 2, the logarithm portion. Okay, just the same, we are going to apply or replace the function from the original function of x. So, considering function of y, we have here logarithm of 2 plus y. So in, instead of x here, no? so we just replace that by y and then divided by 2 minus y and then plus logarithm of 2 plus z okay, all over 2 minus z so simple as that so now we are going to apply the theorem on logarithm we're in if we have a quotient say logarithm of a all over b this is just equal to log of a minus logarithm of b so by that we can have logarithm of 
2 minus y times minus sorry logarithm of so this should be 2 plus y and then logarithm of 2 minus y similarly we're going to apply it in here so we have that plus logarithm of 2 plus z minus logarithm of 2 minus z okay and then we'll just have to combine the positive terms okay what are the positive terms here of course this one logarithm of 2 plus y plus this one plus logarithm of 2 plus z okay and then minus logarithm of 2 minus y minus logarithm of 2 minus z then from that you just have to apply also the principle of logarithm in terms of this one say logarithm of a times b this is actually equal to logarithm of a plus logarithm of b okay so that is practical concept we apply it in here so simply we have logarithm of we just have to multiply the terms see 2 plus y times 2 plus z okay and then we factor out minus here minus okay logarithm of just the same we are going to multiply those terms say 2 minus y times 2 minus z okay so if we're going to multiply this one we have logarithm of we have 2 times 2 that is uh, 4 and then this is plus 2y and then plus 2z and then plus zy and then we also have for the next term we have logarithm of 4 minus 2y minus 2z and then that is positive zy okay so we reverse it back using this principle okay and then by doing that we'll just have to see that we have logarithm of 4 plus 2y plus 2z plus zy all over 4 minus 2y minus 2z plus zy in which we yielded to the answer okay so 4 plus 2y plus 2z plus yz is this the same as this together with the denominator so this is the solution for the second problem then moving on to the third problem we have this one okay so this is a problem of uh, uh, 
exponents. Okay. So given function of z is equal to a raised to z, show that fy times fx is equal to function of y plus x. So here, we just the same. We're going to replace the function. See, this is a raised to z. We write it as a raised to y for this. Okay. So similarly for that x, a raised to z, a raised to x. Hence, we can have this as a y plus x. So we are multiplying the exponents. So we just add the. Uh, we, we are multiplying two terms with the same basis. We'll, we'll just have to add their exponents. So hence we have here a raised to y plus x, which is actually equal to the function of y plus x. So as simple as that. Okay. So for the fourth problem, we have given function of x is equal to cosine of 2x. Show that function of pi plus x is equal to function of x. So we're going to deal with this one. I think this is quite similar to the previous problem we had. So as, as a solution, we are going to use a trigonometric identity for this. And what, what must be the trigonometric identity? Okay, so first, we are going to replace cosine 2x by cosine pi plus x. Okay. And then, we know that pi is actually 180. So, let us already replace that by 180. And uh, here, we're going, going to apply, obviously, the double angle for cosine. Uh, by the way, let me just correct this, that this is double angle. Okay, so this shall be double angle. 2 times pi plus x. This is 2 times 180 plus x. So we use double angle identity for cosine. And that will be equal to cosine 2 theta will be equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So this is the identity. Okay. Identity we need. And then we use that identity. Of course, we have 1 minus 2 sine squared 180 plus x hence this can be written as 1 minus 2 sine of 180 plus x this is actually raised to 2 okay so we know that this is a sum identity of angles in terms of sine. So perhaps we can write the identity for sine sum identity. And that is actually sine x plus y is equal to sine x cosine y plus sine y cosine x. Okay, so we'll just have to apply that. So we have here equals 1 minus 2. Okay, we'll just apply that. 
say this is our x and that is our y using this formula we have sine of x is 180 cos sine of y which is x okay plus sine y which is x cosine 180 this is squared okay we note that sine 180 is 0 okay. so this is 0 so everything here will be 0 and then we also note that cosine 180 is equal to negative 1 so hence we have here equal to 1 minus 2 the first term is 0 and the second term will yield to negative sine of x okay and then uh, from this we see that this is the function of this one pi plus x and then we j by the way this is a squared no and then we will yield to 1 minus 2 sine squared x so did you notice that uh, we are just going back to this equation okay so 1 minus 2 sine squared but this time it is on x hence we can write this as cosine 2 theta so the function of pi plus x is actually cosine 2 theta using this identity so what can we observe now okay so function of pi plus x is actually equal to function of x the way this should be x okay so as a conclusion we can write this function of x is actually equal to function of pi plus x as we can see it here in here okay so this is the solution for the fourth problem Okay. okay, moving on to the fifth problem we have here. Functions under logarithm. So we're going to show that function of y minus 1 plus function of y is equal to this function. y minus y all over 2. So again, all we have to do, we substitute this function to the base equation which is x plus 1 all over x so see the first term is this one function of y minus 1 we can say that this that is equal to logarithm of function of sorry, y minus 1 So that is supposed to be x and then plus 1 okay again x here will be replaced by y minus 1 okay plus function of y which is logarithm of y plus 1 all over y so we can further expand this and uh, say okay so the the principle here is this one if we have here logarithm of a all over b that is simply equal to logarithm of a minus logarithm of b 
that is the principle we're going to apply it in here so we have logarithm of y minus 1 y minus 1 plus 1 okay minus logarithm of y minus 1 perhaps you can enclose that into parentheses plus logarithm of y plus 1 minus logarithm of y then we simplify this one we can just cancel one here okay this one so we have logarithm of y minus logarithm of y minus 1 plus logarithm of y plus 1 minus logarithm of y so that we can now cancel this portion okay next we reverse it back to the quotient of that logarithm because we have a positive and negative logarithm here so the positive will be placed on the numerator Y plus 1 all over logarithm y minus 1 so if I'm going to have a factor here because our solution needs to provide us a denominator equivalent to 2 here okay so what I will do is to express that one or generate that one by simply multiplying the whole equation by one half all over one half so actually i'm not changing the term here whether it is under the logarithm function see this enclosed by parenthesis here actually i'm not changing the whole picture because I'm just multiplying it by 1 okay and then by that we can now express this by the way this should be a single logarithm say this is log so I'm not actually changing the logarithm of the expression because it's just being multiplied by 1 okay so that is the concept so we can have now logarithm the denominator goes y plus 1 all over 2 then the numerator numerator uh, denominator sorry becomes y minus 1 all over 2 so next is we will express okay so for our convenience we, we are going to translate it again with this one logarithm of y plus 1 all over 2 minus logarithm of y minus 1 all over 2 so here logarithm y plus 1 can be written as logarithm of y minus 1 plus 2 and that is all over 2 okay and then minus logarithm of y minus 1 all over 2 okay so we are getting nearer to the answer
because here 2 now is visible in our equation further let us factor these terms so that we can distribute the denominator okay so we can see that this is logarithm of what y minus 1 all over 2 plus 2 over 2 that is actually 1 minus logarithm of y minus 1 all over 2 okay so we reverse that again to this original form log a over b we have y minus 1 all over 2 plus 1 all over y minus 1 all over 2 okay if you notice it yielded back to this function x plus 1 all over x logarithm of x plus 1 all over x we're in uh, k sige. copy this this is our x actually and this is our x and it yielded back to this logarithm of x plus 1 all over x which is actually this this one okay so that's it so therefore therefore function of x is really equal to function of y minus 1 all over 2 okay so this is the answer okay okay for the last problem So this is the last problem number six so the function is one all over x for the function of x so all we have to do is to express it in those functions say for the first term we have one all over x plus k minus one all over x so we simply get lcd say that lcd is the multiplication of this x squared plus xk okay so if we're going to get okay, we express it first by this x plus k times x we get for the first term so x plus k times x divided by x plus k what is left is x okay minus the other term x plus k and then we simplify the denominator we have x squared plus xk okay and then we simplify again minus x minus k so therefore we have this x to be cancelled and then we arrive with the answer k 
x squared plus kx. So this what must be our final answer for number 6. Okay, so that's it with the functional rotation problems. So I hope you have a good comprehension with that solution. So thank you and stand by for the next session. Good day.